Hi, welcome back all of you, Nana here. And then uh, we are having a special session on this uh, dropship. So today we are going to see dropship with the GOP and then without GOP also. So there is a change from 22D actually. I think there is a change. And then uh, a small change, actually, a small improvement rather, if you can say. There is a small improvement when compared to this one. <clears throat> so let us now have a look at the improvement, what they have done in this. Uh, if I go there, click on it. So the first activity is what, uh, whenever you're going to have a SCM orchestration, supply chain orchestration of integrating between modules. So what you do is when you're working on the vision, the first activity which you do is what you go to the tools and then you go to the security console. And then I'm working on PRC 11 actually. So add these three roles. I'm going to use this and I'm going to query the PRC 11. So I'm not querying the PRC 11. So if you click on it, what happens, you can now see the rules which I have added. So uh, there is a document in my repository actually. So if you go there, the long word space, if you go to the additional docs records four, in the additional docs records four, I have a document right? on 58. Then the 58 one is the vision rules. So this is a basically a clubbing of all the activities of a particular module. So if you give OU SCM role, there is no data access required for the vision orgs of 01, 001, 002, etc. Similarly, PRC all is a very basically for all the six pillars of PRC. If you give this, then all the six pillars will work without any problem. Similarly, GSE role for SCM, what is it? Long work for order management as well as a global order processing. Also. So these three roles, if you add it, then module to module integration, you will not have any problem at all. So this has been added now. I've already added all it. So you now go to this place and then have a look at it. You can now see the GSE role for SCM OTC is there, OU SCM role is there, PRC all is there. So one, when you add all the roles, what you have to do is you have to run the import user role after having added to any of the legal users, right? The PRC 01.student up to PRC 40.student are all legal users actually. So whenever you're adding this to any of the legal users, you go to home and then you go to the monitor process. I go to the monitor process. I'm now in the favorites actually, I'll put it in the favorites. <laughs> so go to the place and then run this. Right? Click on the schedule new process and then we're going to run it. So it's called import user role. <clears throat> so run the import user role. So that will now take care of what, uh, <clears throat> sensing whatever changes has been made in the secondary console to the transaction system. Import user percentage, role percentage in the task. So you run this role. The mistake actually. <clears throat> so import user role is the one. <clears throat> so, been a mistake actually. So, uh, so that will be taking care of all the things in this. Import user role. Percentage. So I already uh, put that as a one now. <clears throat> so you run this one. Import user role uh, application security data as the one which you had run. So once when this is completed, you run the LDAP also. So go there. So it's uh, Import percentage, uh, I will now say user percentage, role percentage, and then I can take this one. Import user role, secret data. So you run this, and then afterwards, what you do is you run the LDAP also. One, when this completed, you run the LDAP. So run the LDAP. So one, when you run these two things, right, retrieve LDAP. Then your system is fully set. The newly added role, which are now going to give you full powers, will be basically running it. Now. I'm not running it. So click on submit now. And like, so you can submit. So it will lock down. So the newly added rules will now start to function fully. Yet. So uh, that one I have already done. Now I am now running the retrieval adapt changes. So this way you can work with that. So this will be ensuring it. So that what happens, we can very well have a what happens, yeah, integration between module to module. Now we are going to have integration between order management and then procurement actually. So first of all, let me go and then create an item actually. And let us now go there and then create an item. And then I'm going to start explaining the dropship process what exactly it is. Right? Because we have to collect it for the place. I will now go to what? Product management. <clears throat> I will now go to the product management. <clears throat> I will now go to the product management. So go to the product management. And then go to the product information management. Let me create a dropship item actually. We are going to create a dropship item. So any questions you can ask me at any time. So that all I'll give it answer. So dropship item. <coughs> so 
So you click on it, and then here you go there, and then click on create an item. So click on create. So we are going to create an item. So here is space. So click on it. We are going to create an item, and then let me create another master zero zero zero, and then the or which you are going to use for this one. <coughs> Was it? Is zero 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 coming back? So click on OK. You are not working on this R. So click on OK. And then ensure that your uh, status is approved actually. Otherwise, you had to use some other item class because the people are working on product hub also. So they would have customized the root item class. If that is the case, then you choose some other item class for our uh, inventory table. Yeah. So the status must be approved. So I will now say it's a T0101. I will now say drop ship. Test. There's a drop ship test data all over one. So I'll not take copy it and then put all the space. And then go down now and go back. And then go to the specifications. <coughs> so it's a, each is a unit of measures actually. EA is a unit of measures, primary units of measures. Yeah. I go to the specifications and I go to sales and auto management level. So whenever you're working on drop back to back, so there are four activities on back to back. One is what? Back to back buy, one is the back to back transfer, one is the back to back make, and then one is the back to back drop ship. So you have to enable this. So that's so back to that. So this will not be fulfilled from our inventory actually. Fine, it will be what happens. A, a supplier is going to supply this directly to the customer actually. So back to back is yes actually. And then it is uh, internally transferable is required for your transfer orders. Right? Internally transferable is an item defining attribute, and this is the status attribute. These two things must be on. And so what happens? They do it, and then it is already shippable as well as invoiceable. And this is the one. And then it is a customary practice since we are now going to interface to uh, what happens purchasing. You go to the what's called purchasing capital and then give a list price. Right. List price is a mandatory one if you're going to interest in the purchase. The list price has been given right. one dollar and give it. And then you go to the planning. In the planning, what you do is what I know in this place. The planning time frames I will not make it as 50 days. That means what if a sales order needs an item for the next 50 days, it will be considered for a demand supply balancing actually. DS balancing will be happening for the next 50 days only. If an order is beyond 50 days, then what happens? It may even fail, actually. It will now land up on a geo party. So we had again run certain other processes, basically. So it is preferable to keep it as a high value, right? maybe even 500 days also. If you say somebody wants it after a year's time, nobody will now ask a material after a year's time. Right? So the request day, which is from today onwards, from the next 50 days, it will not take care of it automatically. So there is the one activity we can do on the planning of it, right? in the planning area. Right? So in the purchasing, it's okay. And then the sales order. Maybe. So you know, set up everything on this one now. We'll now go and assign the item to the organization. Go to the associations and then let us know associate the item to the organization. Go to actions and then go to self map. Let me add it to my 001 or 001 or go to associate. And then let me keep a stock of let us say five quantities. So I'm now going to keep a stock of items. Yes. So click on it. So the item is now getting associated to the my child or that is now happening. I will not go there. So click on save and close by which what happens? The item is now created and then assigned to my child dog. The item is now created and assigned to the child dog. Now let us now keep a stock of five quantities on my 001 or Are you all uh, hearing me? Can, can somebody say yes to me? <clears throat> is it audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. yes ma'am. Yes, So I will now go to the home, then I will now go to the inventory, right? I will now go to the, uh, what's called, I will now go to the supply chain execution, and then I go to the inventory management, and then let me keep a stock of five on the hall. Go to this place. <clears throat> let us now keep a stock of five for this hall. So go to the create, what happens, sub inventory transfers, and then let us now make what a miscellaneous result. So go there. M I S C is a one time give it up. So miscellany is reject. None of one one query. Tell me. Uh, in the product information management at the item uh, attribute level, you have kept uh, default sales order source step as internal. Does yeah. that have an impact? Because uh, yeah, when you yeah, overlap on that, okay, if one, it's external yeah. only, then it will be drop shipped. If it's an internal, yeah, then yeah. it won't be drop shipped. Yeah, I, I will come to the point. I forgot it actually. I'll not go to the I forgot it. Good, I good. just wanted to check whether it has any impact or not. Yeah, I will come to the point. I've I, I forgotten it actually. I forgot to tell it actually. <laughs> yeah. So I'll now make a, what's called a great miscellaneous transaction. We'll come back to the uh, that particular part. No? 
Yeah, but for back to back, it's internal, right? Only for drop ship, it's external. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm coming. Sorry. I'm, I'm coming. Okay. So, click on it. Again, come back. <laughs> Good evening. Click on search. So, click on okay. So, let us now keep a stock of five on this. Good question. And please shoot your questions so that whatever I will not forget anything. So this I have forgotten it. I will <laughs> doing it actually. So this one plus. So I will now say it's the T zero one zero one the one time I am in the zero zero one off. Let me keep a stock of five in the stores. So unfortunately, order management is now linked with the data collection actually, whereas it is not so in the case of EBS basically. And then previously it was even collect uh, a refresh and start also is required. Now. <laughs> what they have done is at least they have bypassed the refresh and start. We are all waiting for them to bypass even the collections. So click on subscribe. So, uh, have you enabled HVGOP for this uh, test instance? What is it? HVGOP, high volume. High volume is not enabled. Yeah, yeah. High volume is the one which I am not aware of it actually. Uh, yeah. uh, if you are aware of it, you can even uh, tell me Karthik. You can even uh, come on and tell me. Uh, no, it's just like uh, you don't have to run this uh, refresh and start collection planning all everything once you it, it happens real time. Oh, 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 is it so? Yeah, yeah. Shall we try that now? Fine. So you're saying that if it's the high volume, then uh, collection is not required. You're saying, huh? You you don't require to run every single time because whenever we change item attributes or anything, attribute changes are automatically happening. Fine. Uh, even on yeah. the previous versions, what I was saying, even if you do, if you change an attribute, that gets reflected immediately in the planning area. But collection, at least once, it is required. Actually, the high yeah, net target net change is fine. Yeah, net change is okay, fine. But uh, here, uh, what I was saying, you need to collect at least one section. No, if it's the first time, then targeted works fine. The rest of all time, it, it takes HP. If it's enabled, then no need of running. The change means what? An item is already existing, and then there, there is a change in the supply of the change the attribute. Okay, fine. That's okay. But mm. item itself is not collected, means what? It needs to be collected. And then, in that case, we need to run. Yeah, yeah, that's all. High volume will now, uh, what happens, uh, do some bypasses, but uh, in fact, what happens, uh, the basic collection once is required. Now, we'll again go to the product management. Okay, the product management. <laughs> so, that part I have forgotten it actually. I'm going to go to the product management again. No, no, in EBS, it needs a VCP, which is a separate server. But is that in... No, 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 the two, the distributed order orchestration is highly sensitive to item attributes. It's highly sensitive to item attributes. But not for GOP. Fine. GOP ignores this item attribute. GOP ignores the item. If you go on and click on it. So it's uh, basically what very highly sensitive to uh, your item attribute. The entire order management, which is now driven by the do, is, a is a, what's called sensitive to item attributes. If you go there. If you go to the sales and order management, if you say what happens, the shippable is no, it will not interface into uh, what happens your uh, shipping area at all. If the invoice is no, it will never interface it to the AR actually. Right? So that way it works. The shippable and then the invoiceable and then many, many attributes are basically it is sensitive to item attributes. But if back to back is enabled here, what happens, the default sales order source is what internal, this is bypassed. Right? You need not have to set it as external talk. So the GOP will not take care of it and then it will not consider this attribute at all. Got it? Fine. Your question is answered. For a GOP, for a back-to-back -back as well, yes, this may be internal or external. It is always external. Okay. That way it works. In and outs. And this I have forgotten to tell you. GOP will not override the item attribute as far as if it is a back-to-back -back is yes, sir. I will not give a cancel. But, of it. Yeah. Nana, sir, one question. So yeah. when we say back-to-back, -back, it's... It's internal, right? I mean, either we are fulfilling it like. No, I'm coming to that. I'm coming to what is back to back. Oh, let me wait for something. Right? Let me okay. Go. okay. Sure. So now, what I'm going to do is I have to perform a collection actually. Let us not perform a collection because without a collection, it will not be possible for us to promise the customer actually. I will not go to the home icon. <clears throat> I'm coming to the back to back. So during collection, I will not explain the theory. I will not go, there. I will not go to the supply chain planning. 
and then go to the planning process. Fine, we have to perform a collection. Supply chain planning and then planning process. And going to okay, on. So here, if I go and then query on the item, fine. the item is what? T01. And then make a search. Fine. Take a search. You will not find the item is not available in the planning area at all. So if it is not available in the planning area, it cannot be fulfilled through back to back action. And for a back to back, it has to be collected. So now what I will do is I will not do the collection. Right? So once you should have collected everything in full, now, right? go to the collect planning data. I have already done the collection in full lecture. Right? Go to the collect planning data. I have already done the collection in full. Right? What do you do? You have to go to the OPS and then make it as what? As a targeted. Right? And then perform one full collection of all the reference entities and then all the supply chain planning entities. Right? So this has to be done once. Right? This has already been done. Right? I have already done it. So there is no need to again do it. Right? So I will not bring it. So here, what happens? I will know in the supply area, I will not bring only on and over here. And then in the reference data, I will not bring only item. So whatever is required, only I will collect. So once when you are selectively collecting it, the time taken will be less selected. Right? So if it is still not collected, then you have to go for a full one. Right? If there is a dependency on some other reference entities, then you may have to collect. So, so since you know, I've already done a full collection, so now this time, what happens? I'm not going to collect only item. And then in this place, what happens? I'm going to collect only on and on. And then you do not go for net change because net change is giving a lot of problems. Net change means what? The item is already collected and then there is some change. So then net change will work. Net change is fast, but uh, people are saying from the field that what happens? Uh, it is preferable to go for a target because this itself will not take a longer time actually. The data, whatever you don't take a long time, so go there and then on the item and then do it and go and then collect it. Right? So it will not take around five to ten minutes of loss right? by which what happens will be collected. So click on submit. We are submitting it. So the collection is going to start. <coughs> so six, 62 is a control which is running now. Right? We'll now go to the place and click on the star icon, which is a favorite. There, I have got a monitor process. Right? We'll now have a look at it. The collection process would have got triggered. <coughs> so we are now run the retrieval data changes also. Now the collection has started. Now, we will now go to the theory of dropship. So, it will not take approximately 10 minutes for this to collect. Now, right? So, let us now go to the theory of dropship and then export exactly. So, we will now go there tomorrow. We will now have a look at the theory. Go to the place. Yeah. And I go to the Oracle SEM training. And then I go to my e-business documentation because I have not made anything for the question actually. I go to the e-business documentation and I go to the order management. So, in the order management on the day one, right, I have OEM processes. Right? Double click on it. So in the OEM processes, it is almost similar to execution only. All the order management process. The only thing is the way of execution is different when the party is business. They're not there. <coughs> so the order management process. So it is basically shipped from stock, and this is for the make to order. This is for the internal order. This is for the configured order, <coughs> and then this is for the back to back orders. So here we have a separate one for dropship. So the concept is same. So let us say. The customer is, we are now a dealer for Maruti car. The customer is asking for five Maruti cars. And I have in stock only two. So what I will do is I will accept the customer's order. Even though I don't have anything in the stock beyond two. And he is asking for five, I got only two. So what I will do is I will not place a purchase order on my Maruti Vidyo, who is my main manufacturer. So the order will go to him for three quantities. And then he will not drop ship the product of three Maruti cars to the customers directly. And he will be dropshipping the order the customer directly. And then he will never raise an invoice to customer at all. He will now raise an invoice to me only. And then I will pay him separately. And then I will now raise an invoice to the customer for all the five quantities and then I will now calculate payment. So, because I will be operating upon around a 30 or 40% margin actually on the price, on the MRP. So, that much of a discount the supplier is going to give it to me. So, 40% is the margin. And then, so what happens? The sales order gets fulfilled actually. And then whenever you drop ship it, even for the three quantities also, you will not bill with a less than 10, 50, 40% margin. So this is how it works actually. Any doubts on the drop ship process? So the supplier will never contact the customer at all. Or the customer, even if he contacts Maruti with you, they will not ask them to go to a dealer actually, like this. So the dealers only have to contact. So they will not entertain the individual customers directly. Otherwise, what happens? The dealer network will be getting highly affected. So they always love to what happens the promote the dealers, distributors, retailers, etc. etc. And so they will never what happens entertain the straight customers to the company actually. Anybody can say you understood it, this process. Is it clear? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Very good. So this is a dropship process. Dropship. So now I have a stock of five for the item, and then the customer is asking for toll actually, and toll quantities are getting ordered. So let us now go there, go to the system and then have a look at it. So the whole process is now running. 
So once when the load entities are getting completed, then what happens? You can now see that uh, what happens it will be coming. Uh, so the load entities are more completed. And then what happens uh, now? It will be having what one uh, worker to delete stake data will be the last concurrent, which will be the uh, concurrent right? on the collection process. You'll be having what worker to delete stage data. So once when this completes, the collection process is not complete. So it's almost complete now, right? So let us now go there and then have a look at the stock right? on the see the collection. Right? Now have a look at the collection. So I will now go to the supply chain planning and then I go to the planning inputs and then I'm going to query the item. <laughs> so the item has to come into the planning area. Right? I will now query for B01 right? and then click on search. Search for it. So the item is available on the master org as well as in the child org. It is already done. And then before doing the collection, what you have to do is you have to do, you have to go there. Right? You go to the place and click on the uh, task list and then go to the man manage planning source systems. In the manage planning source systems, if it is a new R, so you go to the OPS is the one which is used by the system actually for order management actually. And OPS, is, OPS is the source code actually. So click on the manage organization list and then click on refresh it and then query your R. Zero, zero, query. So it must be enabled for collection. So 001 must be enabled for collection. MOC is already enabled. The CFL is enabled for collection. So after it is enabled for collection, then only you should collect. Otherwise, it will not even collect. It. The data will not be collected. So the data collection is complete. Now we'll now go ahead and then perform the GOP setups. Okay. So the dropship process is understood. Now we are going to have a look at what uh, uh, this thing. <clears throat> Kavita, are you clear on the dropship process? Any questions now? No, none, sir. I'm clear. Thank you. Okay, very good. Now go there. Now let us now go there. Yeah, tell me. Anybody has got any doubts? So go to the home icon. Now I will now go to the order management. I will now go to the order management. Let me go to the order management. I will now go to the order management. So I will now go to the order management. So go to the order management. And then I go to the global order policy. And remember, this needs a license actually. So this needs a license. If you don't have a license, we cannot do any of the four back-to-back uh, -back processes basically. Right? By make transfer and then drop ship, nothing can be done if you don't have a license actually. So click on the global order policy. And then since we have a license, or other vision instance is having licenses for everything. So I go there. I have, we had to do three activities on this. We had to do three activities on this. First is what? You have to go on the set up an ADP room. And click on it. We'll have to set up an ADP room. And go to the manage ADP room you want. And click on the manage ADP rules. <coughs> we go there. And then click on create. <coughs> so here, I'm now going to create a supply chain ADP actually. T01, I will now say supply chain and let's go ADP room. ADP room. So make a supply chain ADP room. So Karthik seems to be very good in uh, planning actually. So he'll be able to great help you. So talk to him for any clarifications. So go there. So I'm now making a supply chain. So here the demand supply balancing I can do either by supply chain or by lead time based or infinite based. Right? So for a back to back, it has to be a supply chain availability. So the radio button must be on the first one and not on the second one or not on the third one. This is not other. This is also not correct. So for a back to back, what happens? You have to use the supply chain availability search, and then you put a tick mark on all three. This is basically used by the planning engine. And then go there. I will now enable all the supply types. And then I will now choose the demand. So the system is now going to balance your supply to demand actually. The on hand will also be sensed. And then uh, what the fulfillment lines, everything will be balanced and then it will not give output actually. This portion is not known to me. It is basically for planning engine actually. Okay. So go there. I will now make a user defined time friends. And then I will now make it a 50 days. Uh, Karthik, are you aware of this one now? Right? If you know it, can you? Throw some light on this now. I know that in the user defined time friends, I know that I'm it a 50 days. So for this, what happens? It normally works actually, but uh, this portion will be fully taught in a, what happens in your supply chain planning training. Engine. So uh, in the planning engine, the planning central has got three modules. One is the supply planning, one is the demand planning, one is the sales and operations planning. So once when you learn it, they will not teach you fully about this SC collection actually, supply chain collection. So having done the ATP rule criteria, right? any doubts on the ATP rule criteria? <coughs> Good. So I will now go to the ATP rule assignment. I will now go to the next tab region called ADP rule assignment. I go to the ADP rule assignment. I'm going to click on plus one. I'm going to assign it. Assign it and drop it down. I will now here make an item organization the highest level. Item organization go there. 
adalam put 0015 so here i will not put my item t01 and give it app <coughs> so only give it app not coming and drop it down and then i will not choose click on search so click on search and then click on search you know running so click on so now the item is assigned actually in the adb right this is now getting balanced for these demands and supplies actually these supplies and demands that will be getting balanced and then it will be doing it so my adp rule is ready actually my adp rule is ready. so give a save and close now i am not going to create a sourcing rule right here i am not going to create only one sourcing rule right that is more than sufficient whereas for the other ones back to back buy make and then uh, transfer we need two sourcing rules if you watch my video i already uploaded in the uh, youtube actually whereas for the drop ship we need only one sourcing rule in other other players i will not go to the manage sourcing rules so we are going to get only one sourcing rule so click on it i will not click on plus now i will click on plus and then i'm going to get only one sourcing rule fine over t01 i will now say buy from so i'm going to buy from <clears throat> yeah karthik i uh, just want to add that uh, dropship only works at the global level not at the local level just yeah. want to uh, inform the users yeah yeah so dropship can you... work at the local level only at the global level that what got the concern yeah even if you try 100 times it won't work so yeah. that that is a main thing okay very good thanks for the input now so anybody has got any extra inputs please uh, pass on to the team actually fine everybody can you, can you throw a bit one minute on that global local what does that mean like yeah yeah i have the same question too so <laughs> karthik it is a, now your dias <laughs> hello ask, they are asking about a, what is the difference between global and local why it is not going to work on local see uh, actually when we do back to buy uh, transfer of these kind of things so what we are mentioning is we need, we want to uh, ship the material from the inventory organizations let's say you have 15 or 16 inventory organizations yeah. whenever you create a sale order mm -hmm. so first system will check the inventory organization where you have given later if there are any associated inventory organizations it will check the local role not the global role global role is, is for the supplier not mm. for the inter internal organizations ah so you mean okay. you mean when you say roots means sourcing rule right because based on Correct. sourcing rule it will it will it will search for the material in the org right yes yes so ah. let us uh, let us take one scenario here let's say that uh, i have 15 organizations and i am a user who is making a sale order at organization a so at yeah. the sale order level i have given organization a so what system does is system will first check the uh, availability later it will see how it's going to be fulfilled so now it will check for the sourcing rule so if you define yeah. a sourcing rule at the local level saying that mm -hmm. uh, transfer from yeah organization a so now the quantity if the quantity is available at organization a then it will be issued out okay okay yeah so if the organization doesn't have any a quantity it will check for other organizations if you have anything yeah. defined at the source rule level mm -hmm. correct okay correct. if no organization has any quantity then it will if there are any back to back buy transfer or any other rules defined then it will perform if it's not there then system will hold there because there is no other rule to perform the transaction Okay. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, it will go to global only in when it has to. It means if there is nothing at local level, it means nothing to transfer. So it has to go to a supplier then, right? Huh. Which is so you are saying global. So if you define in a such a way that if mm. uh, the organization doesn't have any quantity with the fellow organizations also, then the last mm. rule should be a global rule where it will oh. check. Okay, the quantity is not there in any of the inventory organization. Now I'll go and buy with from the supplier. Okay. Yeah, okay. that's how it works. Kathi, can you put your email ID on the chat so that whatever the people can interact you later also whenever they feel like you can put your sure, email. sure, sure. sure. I'll drop the email. You feel like you can also put your mobile, but a mobile means people will be disturbing you too much now. <laughs> uh -huh, no, <laughs> no issues. Uh, Which because uh, this like, is a bit of complex area. Uh, order management, uh, the writing, the sourcing rule. It's very complex area. <laughs> I know that is a very complex one. so i am not doing it and then uh, you can even uh, so karthik is going to put his contact details on the chat actually so please take a note of it and then uh, later on you can even interact with him for any complex requirements so i am putting a sourcing rule effective date as a plus or minus plus and then you go there the, the bottom what was you give a plus and then i am going to do a buy from i will also say buy from so i will not make a buy from and then i will not say supplier is what abc consulting i am going to use one abc consulting is one using it 
and then we have a us site actually let us know use the abc us one site and then i will now give a 100% allocation right and then rank is good so my sourcing rule is ready so this is the second setup actually any doubts on this one good drop it down and then give a save and close so the sourcing rule is ready so the second setup on the gop is ready now we will now go on that make the final setup so the gop is final setup we are going to do it and so go that one i will now go to what go to the manage assignment sets so the atp rules and then your sourcing rules and assignment sets are the three activities i will now go to the manage assignment rules assets and then let us know first of all create an assignment set i will now create an assignment set for no says that t01 assign plus to set so go that one so take of it and then put in the description now and then i will now give a save now. t01 assignment set i am saving it now so i am saving it and then i will now give a plus now fine here we are going to have only one entry whereas for the buy make and transfer you will have two entries no fine please watch my videos on the youtube fine they will telling about how to do a buy make and transfer whereas a drop ship will have only one entry i drop it on i will now what happens i'll go to the item level go to the item level so item level i will now put the item over here now and then this sourcing rule is going to buy fine this sourcing rule is going to buy the t01 and we have buy it. so we are going to buy from supplier and then the item level means what we are shipping it to the customer actually item is what shipping the customer so we will now buy and then ship in one entry actually nothing else for so click on set and close so we are now completed the assignment set also so it is the buy as well as we are now going to buy it but we are not receiving it in our org but he will be shipping it to customer that is what it means because item level is always for shipping to customer so what are the values in catalog nana is it here also we see catalog where is the catalog in the top oh, on the, the top i don't know this is basically uh -huh. from planning actually from a planning okay. perspective we'll be having a lot of things on the catalog actually right? oh, i'm not aware okay. of it so planning i'm not aware of it so once when you learn the planning they will not teach you about the catalogs also okay mm -hmm. go there so go there i will not give a save and close the third setup is now complete now we have to see make the system to sense this assignment set actually so there is a profile there thank you monitor so give a save and close now right will now make one of them to sense it actually thank you monitor i will now go to the setup and make a mess I will not go to the setup and maintenance. I will not go to the setup and maintenance. And then there, I will not make the system to sense this assignment set actually. You will not go to the admin profiles. I will not go to the place and then make a search for it. So click on search. I will not go to the admin profile now. So click on search. I will not go to the admin profile. Manage admin profile. So I will not go to the manage admin profile. Manage administration profile. <clears throat> so here I will now query for the MSP default. MSP personal default personal. And let me query. And then let me change my default assignment set to my assignment set. So the system is pointing to something. Right? In reality, you will have only one assignment set for the complete implementation. Actually, there is only one assignment set. So uh, for training purposes, we are now creating n number, and then everybody is changing it. Actually, so the system is now going to use this assignment set for promising the. fulfillment of the customers needs actually when here we are going to buy and then ship by abc consultant i click on save and close so we are now change the profile msp default assignment set profile has been changed okay. so after having done all the things we have to collect this data also so let us now go there click on the home icon and then let us now perform a collection policy mm, none of one second hello you yeah, tell me tell me yeah, i can hear you yeah uh, i think uh, you forgot to give uh, the item list price I have already given one dollar. I give. You have given. It was given. It was given one dollar in purchasing time <laughs> in the pricing administration. No, we are we are good. We are good to them. And that you got. That you got. Fine. In the items attribute of list price has already been given because it is now going to be interfaced to purchasing. And for the sale, we are going to give a price. And that is the next step. So let us go there. I will now go to the supply chain planning. Go to the supply chain planning. <clears throat> so go to the supply chain planning. And then I will now go to the planning reports. Let us now collect this GOP activities. We'll go to the GOP activities in here. We'll go to the correct planning data, and then I'm going to collect the GOP. And then make it as what OPS? Sorry. So let's go there. Click on correct planning data. So it's not coming. So drop it down, and then make it as OPS. And then here again, uh, drop it down. Negative data. This time the GOP setup has to be collected. So that is nothing but what order orchestration reference object. This I am going to collect, and this is the only one I am collecting. 
So on a OPS targeted manner, I always go for a targeted. It is the less means is good, but one collection must be for all actually. You have to have one collection for everything that has to be done now. And so the one. So let alone submit it. So order orchestration reference object is the one for all the GOP setup structure. You know. Now, once when you put a sales order, then what happens? It will not show you what happens. The price has bought zero. I will not go to the place, then I will not show you the price. So go to the place. I will not go to the order management. <clears throat> go to the order management. <clears throat> go back, go back, go back. You go to the order management, and then I go to the order management. And let me add it to the favorite subject. Let me add it to the favorite subject. So go to this place. Let me add it to the favorite subject. Go to the place. Let me add to the favorite subject. So I'm going to add to favorites. It is what manage orders. Now let me create an order. I click on create order. So we have an all items price which is not set by the vision actually. So if you don't have an all items price, you will not see about how the pricing is going to come up. So click on the create order. And I will not use my US1 business unit. Find the first activity is to what? Choose your BU because the BU has got multiple BUs. Drop it down. I will not choose the US1 business unit. Choose the US1 business unit. I will not choose the computer services and results. Find the famous uh, customer actually or for the vision. So I'm not choosing it. So if I, sometimes what happens if you put COMP, it will not come. If you put three letters, it will come. So three letters, it will not come. So once when you choose it, you don't check your segment and strategy, whether they are all showing properly or not. So computer service is one. So I'm going to choose my segment and strategy. Right? You know, see whether they are all chosen properly or not. Right? They decide that they are the driving force for the sales order actually. So go there. So go to actions and then you go to what? View pricing segment and strategy. So it has to show you corporate segment group one and then corporate pricing strategy group one. And it's a very perfect. I will not put some item over here if I can order. I'm not saying. Yes, and then I give a tab. I want to some items. So where items price is not defined actually. So I want to some items. It needs three letters. Okay, yes, uh, uh, six. It needs six, three characters actually. So they're all bekar, right? Should sense anything now? Two characters is not sensing. Why three characters are required? Even a blank search must be available. Ah, I want to some items. If every item is having a price, I cannot simulate that and show it to you. <laughs> so click on that. I'm going to put some item over here. Okay, now see that the item's price is coming up. If the item's price is not defined, then we have to have an all items price available. That is the best practice. So many companies will now have the all items price as zero. So once when the CSR puts the item and then if the price comes as zero, it will be an alarm bell for you. So you will immediately give the pricing team that order. They please price the product. You will not go ahead at all. You can mute if you are not talking now. <clears throat> so go there. I'm not choosing some item. And then we'll now see whether the price is coming up or not. Oh God, the instance has become slow now. You <laughs> can't repeat actually. <laughs> Sometimes what happens is my uh, Opera is somewhat fast actually. So let me go to Opera and then. So now you see uh, the item's price is coming here. Okay? So uh, if the price is not there, the all items price has to be given. So what I do is uh, I will not go to Opera. I will not go to Opera and then try to work on it. Okay? That is somewhat fast. Let me go to Opera and then log in. So here, uh, this is somewhat slow. So let me log in. <clears throat> So go there. I will not say it's a PRC 11 dot student. I'm not giving the pass. So click on something. You're able to hear me properly. I'm fine. It's not saying there will be a disturbance in the audio quality. Is it okay for you? The audio is okay. It's, it's fine. It's you, fine. Now. You are not in the fine. Line, Now, what I will do is I will now go to the place. I will now go to the order management here. So click on the home icon. I will click on the home icon. I go to the order management. <clears throat> I go to the order management. 
So don't put any message. Okay, uh, is a Karthik's message. It's a Karthik message. Too. So he has now given his uh, uh, Pranay Karthik. Uh, given, you can even use his message and then you can message him whenever you have any, any problem, any doubt sounds. It looks like he has done a lot of activity on the order management on the GOP side. So go to the pricing administration. Let us not give all items price first. I go to the pricing administration and I'm going to defend all items price. I click on it. I will not go to what? Manage price list. So Vision uses a corporate segment price list. I will not query for this. Corporate segment prices. So go there. So click on it. I will not have anything. Corporate segment price is going to So go there. I will not go to the all items and then let us know give all items price of let say ten dollars for all items. So usually they will not keep an all items price of zero. The all items they will not keep a price of zero. So that the CSR will be alerted that item is not priced at go to the place. For every unit of measure, you must have a distinct price at so go there each and then click on take charge. And then let me keep a price of 10. Let me charge. Go down now. And go there. I will not keep a base price of $10. I will not allow manual this one. And then give a start date. Uh, the start date is going to You have to save and close by which order. This is a $10 price. So that item will be priced actually. Now, before we start our sales order for the dropship, there are two more setups which are required. There are two more setups here. So I will not go there. I will not have it. The price has been given on the corporate segment prices. I will not go to the setup and maintenance, and then we have to have two more setups done properly. So go to this place and click on it. I will click on search. So it's what's called manage find. Uh, it is a supply supply financial options something like that, or the name of it. So manage supply financial options. Now remove the manager. Uh, uh, no, sir, there's only single P. Oh, supply. L is double not enough. Yes, you. Yeah. E L Y. Supply financial options. Yeah. Manage supply chain financial orchestration system options. So whenever you're performing a, what happens, you drop ship across the BU. When you do it across the BU, this has to be fully set. So this supply chain financial orchestration is not noted. And this has to be set properly. Now I'm doing it on the same BU only. And if you're doing it across BU, then this option has to be set. And then here we have an item validation organization. It is normally pointing to master. And right? we'll now see what exactly is item validation organization. Right? We have a document on this not only that. So we have an item validation organization on the OM day one. In the e-business documentation, OM, OM day one, we have an item validation organization. We'll now have a look at what exactly is item validation organization. It is nothing but an eligibility criteria. It is nothing but an eligibility. So here, your business has been depicted actually. Let us say we are a manufacturing monitor. We are buying the picture tube, the motherboard and monitor cover from a supplier. The supplier is going to supply it. And then once it is supplied, we are going to receive it in the raw material stores. And then the item is now defined in the master fine. The picture tube, the motherboard, monitor cover, everything is the plan master. And then they are assigned to this org. So only when they are assigned to org, we can receive it from supplier actually. Then we perform an interop transfer and then move the picture tube and motherboard to the manufacturing unit. There we are going to manufacture it. So we have to assign the picture tube and motherboard on this place. And then since I'm manufacturing the monitor, the monitor must be created in the master log and then assigned to this place. So once when the manufacturing is complete, I will now perform an interop transfer and then move the monitor and monitor cover to the warehouse. And from there, we are going to ship it. So the monitor cover is now moving from the raw material stores to warehouse directly. It will not come to the manufacturing. Unit. So this is a sample business process. So I, I hope that there is no doubt on this. So here, there are four orgs which are involved. Master org is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.011. The raw material source is what 0, 0.012. And then this is 0, 0.013. And then the barrels is 0, 0.012. So company may have, the end client may have multiple scenarios. So this IBO, this is an item validation organization. Here also, it is an item validation organization. <clears throat> so it is an item validation organization. So this item validation organization will have, what happens, is a point actually. It points to only one org. Items on that org are only eligible for a sale, actually. Items on this org are only eligible for a sale. So the scenario one is what? FGs are only saleable. Raw materials should not be sold. The end client is very clearly saying, fine. Do not sell the picture tube or motherboard which you're purchasing from supplier. Fine. Because that is not our product. So the company is very strict upon it. Whatever we manufacture must only be sold to the customer. 
So in this case, what happens? We will not choose the IV was zero one four. That means what item in this org are only saleable items. Since the picture tube and motherboard are not in the zero one four, they are not saleable. Even if you try to put it on the sales order, it will not work at all. Got it? Okay. So this is the scenario. And then the next scenario is what the plant is under construction. The end company has already hired the what's called your uh, people, fine. Like your uh, sales officers, purchase officers, accountants. Everybody is now hired. But plant is under construction. During the construction phase, manufacturing is not going on. So at the time, what happens? He is saying buy and sell only raw materials. Do not try to sell monitor at all. Do not put the monitor on the sales order all. During the construction phase, we will now buy and then sell only picture tube and motherboard only. So in this case, we will now make the IVO to point to zero one two. In this case, what happens? We can only sell the picture tube and motherboard and not the monitor actually. Even if you try to put the monitor on the sales order, it will not even come at all. And scenario three is a very common scenario in many many companies. So sell FGs. Fine. If the customer wants raw material also, they are also saleable actually. If he wants it, who will be paid? Whatever is possible, fine. Sell everything. So in which case, what happens? The master org is the only org which has got all the items actually. So we will not. So this is a very common scenario, and then the scenario may even change from time to time. So that means what? Whenever you change the settings on this place, no, right? whenever you change the settings on this place, from that time onwards, it is prospective. It is not retrospective. Remember, from that time onwards, it will not check whether the item is available on this org or not. If it is not available, it will not allow you to do any processing at all. Any doubts on the IVO? <clears throat> so IVO is a validation org. It makes the item eligible for sale. Actually, in this case, it will not make the item eligible for a dropship actually. This is the case. What happens? We will be making eligible for dropship. So here, what happens? We have to even set up all these things. Okay, the RMA activity, everything has to be set up. This is for across BU actually. Right? Whenever you learn the supply chain, financial orchestration across BUs, then what happens? It will be easy. <clears throat> Uh, do you when well, Tijil is there? Tijil may be knowing it. Fine. Tijil has got some idea about it. I am not very sure about whether he knows it or not. <clears throat> fine. Talk to him, and then he may even give you idea about it. <clears throat> so yeah, give a kind of. So this is one area which is not known. The next one is what we go there. I will not go there. Drop ship fin flow. Manage percentage flow. Drop. This is the second setup. Drop ship fin flow. So go to the manage drop ship financial flows. <clears throat> So go to the place and make a search. Thank you, Mr. So once we search for it, we have one now. Fine, click on it. So now, what happens? It is now. What happens? It is now giving a warning. Right? The effective date is going to be changed. Thank you, Mr. You will not change the date. So now, well, I'm give a sanction. I will cancel off. I will not give a. Or I will not give a edit actually. I will not click on the hyperlink of it and then have a look at it. I'm not editing it actually. Right? Click on the hyperlink of it and then make it like look at it. So now again, this. Receiving trade organization must be IVO. Okay, the receiving trade organization must be IVO. So for the vision, they have set up a Chicago. Chicago is zero zero three. Now tell me, can the dropship succeed or not for me? My item is available on zero zero one Seattle. Right? Will it succeed or not? Anybody? <clears throat> will it succeed or not? Right? Will the dropship will not succeed or not? This receiving trade organization is nothing but an IVO. This has to be an IVO. Will it succeed or not? Anybody? Oh God! I may ask a very, a very tough question now. Fine. <laughs> what is IVO? Fine. It becomes eligible for a sale here. Here it now becomes eligible for a dropship actually. Now IVO is pointing to zero three. Item is not available on zero zero three at all. Chicago is zero zero three. So the dropship will fail actually. The drop is going to fail. So IVO should be master or generally right? No. Uh, yeah. It has to be master. It has to be master. And so they have made it wrongly actually. Right? So we will not correct it. First of all, let us not fail on this, and then afterwards we will not correct it. Let us not fail on this. Thank you, Mansur. So go there. I will now look at the concurrents which are running for the collection actually for this month. Right? I will not go to the who my account. Right? So the second setup, the managed dropship financial flow is wrong actually. I will not go to the month process. <clears throat> we go to the month process and then have a look at it whether all the activities are now complete or not. So worker to delete stage data is now complete. So that is the last activity in the concurrent of my collection. Fine, so everything is now collected. So let us now log out and log in, and then create the sales order. So click on it. I will now go to what? Uh, sign out and sign in. Sign out and sign in. I click on confirm. So go there. Click on sign in. So click on it. 
I will not go to what go to the manager orders. I click on the star icon and then I go to the manager orders and then I am now going to create a drop ship order for this for the drop ship item. So go to the manager orders and then we have an all item price of one also is no desired. So everything is now on the place now. So go to the place. So go to the manager orders and then let us now create a sales order. I click on create order. So the first activity is to choose your BU and go down and drop it on. I will choose the BU in the US one business unit. I will not put the customer over here. Now. COEM <clears throat> also whether it comes or not. Sometimes COM will come, sometimes COMP will come. So one of them you can choose from. No so everything is in place actually. Fine. Your pricing strategy and segment has to be checked now. So click on view and then view the pricing strategy and segment. So everything is there. Corporate segment group on corporate pricing segment group on the one Fine. is all there. I will not populate my item. The item will have a price of one. P01011. So the item will have a price of one. So go there. So it is now having a price of 10. I've given a 10 price. Now all it is price is 10. I give it. So it is now he's saying in stock. Now. And how much we are having a stock? We are having a stock of five. Let us say the customer is going to ask for 14 quantities. Give a 14. So the customer is going to ask for 14 quantities. So go that one. So give a tab now. So now also it is now saying as in stock. Had it been a buy, receive, or transfer, it will now what I must say that what I must say. This uh, the only the balance has to be done. But there is a setup. Where what happens, it can even sell the five stock and then what happens, integrate only the balance of nine quantities to the dropship. But I don't know what is that setup. Karthik, are you aware of it? We can very well do it. I have a document of what the, the thing on the EBIS actually fine, but in the fusion, I don't know what exactly it is. So there, here, we can even split the line into two now. Fine, now it is now saying simply in stock actually. 14 is in stock. If I click on add, we are going to add it. I don't know whether. Is it because of a problem or not? Fine. We are not mentioned the IVO in our dropship financial flows. Fine. Is it because of it is not showing in stock or not? I'm not very sure about it. Let us not make a check. <clears throat> so click on add. So we are adding it. So we're not getting added on. So if you go to this place, fine, go there. So there is no need to mention the supply at all because the GOP setup will not decide from where it has to ship. Now. It is not from our warehouse, it will be shipped from our office, the supplier actually. So click on submit order directly. So click on submit order. Fine. After having added the line in the main one, fine, we can very well submit the order. So click on submit the order. We are going to submit it. <clears throat> so click on submit. <clears throat> so we are now submitting it now. So the order is submitted. So it is now going to progress on the workflow. The order is now getting submitted now. <clears throat> so this will now progress on the workflow. <clears throat> So the order number will be created and then it will now go to processing actually. Now it is going to fail actually because your dropship org is not your the validation org. The validation org has to be a master org. So it is now showing you Chicago. Item is must be available on the validation org. So if the item is not available on the validation org, it is now going to fail actually. It will be failing actually. So you'll be finding 97408 is the one point submitted. It is now the processing. Let us now switch to fulfillment. So go to actions and then switch to fulfillment. So go to actions, sorry. To the price actually. Okay. Go to actions and then go to switch to fulfillment. So we are going to switch to fulfillment view now. That is along with the taxes actually. <clears throat> 14, 140 plus some taxes is 152. So, so I will now go to what? Click on the orchestration number now. Right? Click on the orchestration number. Now we are going to see a failure actually. So it has to be scheduled and then it has to go to what? It has to go to what? Uh, uh, request orchestration of supply. So if you click on the orchestration number, it will be progressing on this one. It will be first scheduled and then afterwards, the reserve will not change to what? Request orchestration of supply. But here itself, it will not fail. Actually. You will not find an X mark coming up on this. An X mark is going to So click on request. So now, very soon, the X mark will be given. It will not fail actually because our dropship fin flow is not pointing to your uh, uh, validation org. So the validation org has to be usually master. Org. So that whatever, every item will be available on the master. And so that can be very well used for your promising the customer's needs. Actually. <clears throat> so click on top. Schedule is now happening. It's not taking a longer time actually. So anybody has got any doubts can ask me now. 
So in the meantime, what happens? I have no right click on the duplicate. No right click on the duplicate tab. So let me go to that orchestration fin flow center. I'm going to use this. And then there are no more things. Click on it. And then you're not going to set up a maintenance. And then you're going to set up the organization to master. Mm -hmm. Set up a maintenance one. So click on it. Go to the search and click on search. Go there. I will not say manage. Uh, drop find percentage fin percentage flow percentage. So manage drop to financial flow. So, so here go there. Click on it. Click on refresh. Now. Click on refresh. It will have failed by this time. Still working. Shouldn't have started, but the failure here to see it. <coughs> so it's not saying scheduled actually. It is not saying scheduled. Scheduled, and then maybe the next step it has to fail actually. I don't know when is going to fail actually. So now what happens? It has been interfaced to procurement. It is not interfaced to procurement. Thank you for the time. Probably in 22 days they might have changed the business process a little bit. But previously it never used to work at all. So procurement has started now. Schedule right? procurement has started. So click on refresh. So probably <coughs> it may go ahead. I think. So now this dropship concept is not there. Fine, it allows you to have anything. Right? Maybe this must have been raised by many, and then they might have bypassed it. I'm not sure about it. You know, see if the procurement has started, then we're not going to what already shipping it will be great actually. Or if it doesn't happen, what you have to do is you have to go there and then click on it now, and then make a search and then change it to master. Make a search and then change it to master. Click on it. Click on the hyperlink of it. And then change it to master. Right? This org has to be changed master. Your trade organization must be master. Right? Fine, that is the item valuation organization. That is how it works previously. Fine. So this is for the different business unit. For your business unit, it has to be appropriate. We'll now see whether it works properly or not. So there are many changes that are happening now and then. Right? You see, the X mark has come. So the procurement has not gone. Fine. So it's not scheduled, but the next one is coming. Fine. You will now click on that. What happens? A message. Fine. 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 So now it's still working actually. <laughs> so click on the message type. It will give you a blah blah message now. Right? A huge message will be coming. But that is not the real message actually. If you go there, if you go to the first line, click on it. Yeah, there is no saying if the procurement process orchestration is at all. If you go to the second line, it will give you a huge message. Your item in the description is not at go. Categories is running. UM is not valid. So these are all what happens. The item is not valid. And all these errors are picked up by the technical team and then populate to you. It is not actually not error. It is mainly because of the IVO is not there. The item is not available in Chicago. Mm -hmm. So let us now go there and then correct it to what operations. Now click on it. So click on what happens to go there. Select it and click on it. And line, this line I'm going to change it. So it's now giving a warning packet on SNAP. Let us now change it to what operations. So go there. Mm -hmm. I'll now put operations. Are you offer you RUAT? So we are meeting as operations from like that. So click on save now. Click on save. Attribute from, from uh, what happens there? Conversation. Now, what happens when I change it to operations? It is not coming actually. So it looks like what happens there? Uh, I will not click on anything. I click on make. I give a cancel. Now I click on cancel. Cancel. You go there and click on it. You now go to this place and click on edit now. So click on yes now. So go there. So here I will now delete it and then drop down by the receiving view has to come over and it should not be getting vanished at all. So now choose operations. Operations and make a search. search. Organization name is what. Then for the operations name, click on search. Move on, then click on okay. So I'm going to give it. Why the receiving view is going? So actions, let us not delete it. Then I will now say correct record. The receiving view is not being. So give a cancel. Then let us not do the correct record of it. Ah, so we select it and then actions. I will now say. Uh, add insert correct record. Uh, click on correct record. 
So in the correct record, so when I put as operations, these two things are going away. Now say operations. That is why it's not even saving it. So what I will do is I will now put an end date for this and I will not do it. Let me put an end date for this. I will not go there. Put actions and then put a correct record. So let me put an end date for this one. I will not put an end date for this one. The end date is what? I will not say uh, uh, in the, in the 2016 is coming now. Right? So let it be anything. If, if it is started, it is okay. But the end is not. Right? Ah, we are unable to make a correction of the end date. No? End date, we are unable to correct. Actions and then put the end date. Put the end date. You must enter an effective start date for the selling view. Start date is there. There is an error actually. For the selling view. You have to cancel it. So when I am putting the master, it is not coming properly because master org is not an inventory org actually in this system. So it is an item org. So that may be the problem. Anyway. So it is an item org. So it is not an inventory org. So it is not coming. So what I will do is I will know for the time being, I will not change it to CF lecture. Good action is one edit. So let me change it to CF lecture. Seattle is an inventory org. Fine. Normally, in the vision, what happens is they have not kept the master org as an item org. Item org is not a correct option. So I will not say SEAPTN. Seattle, it will not work. Seattle is an inventory org. So it will not have these things. So you want to make it So it must be operation because since the master is an item org, it is not allowing you. So give a save and close. Give a save. Now it will not have change. Now it will not have any problem at all. Got it now. It must be master org because since the master org in the vision has been made as an item org. And I always tell our people, don't make it as an item org at all. Item org will have a lot of problems. Supply chain item org is not a problem. So everything is now done. So what I will do is I will now go there. The error is coming. I will cancel my I will not. What I will say. Log out and log in and then do it. Whenever you make some major changes, you have a habit of logging out and logging. So click on the other. No, log out and log in. So click on the now I made it as a sale actually. Click on the other. I will not log out and log. So go there. So sign out and sign out. So operations must be an inventory org and not an item org. So that is not okay. But item is available on Seattle, it's okay. So I'm not using the Seattle. But I'm not signing. Now let us not go there and create a new sales order. So I'm go to this place. I will not go to what? Manage orders. This time it will not have any problem. The manager dropship fin flows is now pointing to an org. Item is available at the dock. An item has to be available at the dock. That is very, very important. Now click on create order. <clears throat> Drop it down. I will not choose it as what? Use one business unit. I'm going to go there. The computer services unit. Click on that. Everything is coming. I will not put the item over the unit. So it's what? T0101. I will know this time the number for 16 quantities now. So go there. The number for 16 quantities like they have. So click on add. We should not get interface to procurement, but it should say orchestration of supplies actually. You want to have 16 quantities. And click on supply door. So 16 quantities. We'll now see whether. 16 is interface to purchasing or only 11 is interface to purchasing. I have a feeling that it has to be 11 actually, because we already have one and a five. Also, none of one thing. Yeah, uh, in the dropship flows, uh, if uh, the business has only single inventory organization, then we can give the inventory organization. Like if oh, they have more than one, yeah, yeah, then that, uh, the item mark, item master will be yeah, mandatory. Yeah. But if it's only one, then it's fine. It, it works. That's it. Really because uh, we need to do ASN for this inventory. Mm. Oh. We can do it. ASN. ASN can be done rather than it is going to be a must or must. So click on schedule. Schedule is passed now. So this time you will not get an X mark. You will not get any X mark. If it is a single org, we can even fill inside. That. That's it. Now, what happens? It will be interface to purchase. Previously, it used to have an orchestration of supply because it is a dropship actually. But now, what happens? It goes as a procurement actually. So now, what I was request requisition is now created. So it has now created that position. So the requisition is now created. So we will now have a look at that. What happens the requisition? I will now go there. So requisition is now created. And with a right click on that, what happens the duplicate? 
So the requisition is now created. So I did not create a requisition. I will now go to the procurement and then I go to the purchase orders. Fine, go to the purchase orders. <clears throat> so the requisition is now created. You will now go to the purchase orders and then here you will now go there and then go to the process one and click on it. Click on the task list and then go to the process requisition. In the process requisition, you can now see in this place the requisition is now created, but there is no intimation. When you go to the fulfillment lines, you will see whether you are able to see the requisition number or not. Go to the fulfillment lines. A number will be generated. A requisition number will be generated at line level. Uh -huh. Where we can see it actually? Yeah. On the right hand side, uh, below to the drop ship. On the right hand side, you have the requisition number. Just below, below, below to that. Yes. Right hand side. On the right hand side. Down. At the end. Okay, one second. In this right hand side, 204115. So the requisition number is at 204113. So on the supply details, we are able to see the requisition number has been created. So go to the place, find that. So 204115 is the one, find 204115 and go to query. 204115 is the one. Remove the buyer. So we are, so we are able to see the requisition number on the sales order itself now. So the requisition. Oh, no, no. Uh, one thing you have missed here. You need to run a schedule process for orders to import into the purchasing. You need to run a schedule process. So it is not required previously. It is required uh, sometimes. Mm -hmm. If no. it's a schedule process, then it is fine at the production level. So it must have somebody might have set up the approvals actually. That may be the problem. I don't think so. There is any approval um, required uh, if you do dropship. If you go to the task level, we have generated orders. Uh, no, see one second. Because I have never run any, any import program at all. And normally it used to come now. You can search for it. You can see. Or is it associated with any profile option all the time? You can search it's not coming. The is not coming at all. My my business unit is coming. Uh, can you just once check with the generate orders? Okay. Generate orders will not generate the order you're saying now, thank automatically. Okay, fine. No, no. Once you run that process, the requisition will fall in this pool. So, what is the concurrent you want to run me? Which concurrent add -on? Also, have you any? Have you given any uh, preparer at the procurement like uh, Pro user? Uh, user level preparer. Where to set up the preparer? Actually, he is uh, uh, basically a procurement agent also. I made him. So it in the it is in the setup and maintenance. We need to give a preparer for procurement. We need to give a buyer there actually. Ah, uh, yeah, very correct. It's very correct. I'm very, I'm very correct. I forgot the name. Because uh, even the if the requisition is created. So we have to say who is the preparer for the procurement is very correct. No, I forgot it actually. There's a one glitch here that is uh, it is common for the entire uh, PU. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We cannot have multiple people. That is a very headache. Uh, that is the one which I have forgotten actually. I go to the search. No, fine. I will not go to the manage order management parameters. Fine. So manage percentage fine, order percentage fine, parameter percentage. So I have forgotten this actually. So we have to say who is the buyer actually. So preparer for the buyer actually. So here. Uh, What's called the preparer percentage fine preparer percentage okay, no, fine. Preparer. preparer for the procurement has to be there fine. It is the, the Calvin Roth actually. So that is the reason. Yeah. So yeah. had I gone to what happens the Calvin Roth's login, it may come. Huh? Yeah, yeah. You need to go to Calvin Roth. So let only me... he can create a purchase order. Yeah, yeah. So in Calvin's Roth login, we'll now go and we'll see. Fine. This is the preparer for procurement. So we'll not take care of it. We'll not log in with another one. We'll not log in with another one. We'll not paste it over here. <coughs> I will not log in with the Calvin block actually. So before which, what happens? I have to set up the what's it called the uh, this thing. Uh, the password has to be set for him. Uh, Calvin block. Uh, so I will not set up the password for him, and then I will not log in. I go to the tools. You go to the tools. Not the tools. Yeah, the preparer for procurement is very correct. Uh, so that I have not seen it actually. I go to the tools. And then I go to the security console. I will now query for the Calvin drop and then reset the password so that you can log in. Go to the users now. Users. I now say Calvin. Calvin drop here. The Calvin drop. Reset the password for him. So click on the reset password. <clears throat> Manually, I'm changing it. Welcome one two three. What they have it is welcome one two three. So click on reset password. So we are all ready. So let us now go there and then log in. The Calvin drop. Welcome one two three. <coughs> so click on sign. So we are now signing in as a Calvin drop. 
he is the preparer for Fakir Bhut. So now see that he can now see this. So this approval is automatic, isn't it? Am I correct? Whenever uh, for uh, for back to back buy and uh, drop ship, there are no approvals. We no. cannot configure. So buy and drop ship is very correct. Arthi has told buy and drop ship. The requisition approvals are automatic. Please note it down. So go to the procurement, and then I will now go to the purchase orders. Now click on the purchase orders. I am not query for this. I am now in Calvin Drops login now. I can click on it. Space. So click on the process requisition. <clears throat> so what is space? I don't know. Say what is the number? Nine point two zero one. Yeah, this is the one. So you see, you are able to see. It. So as Karthik told me, there is no approval. Internal approval is not triggered at all. It is all always automatic. But purchase orders approvals are triggered. Actually. And then there is an IA account there. If you click on the IA account. It says what this uh, particular one, the requisition is for a dropship or a third party. Venture. The requested goods are for a ship to be a third party. Venture. So before I convert it into a purchase order, I will now set up the PO approvals. Right? So requisition approvals are automatic always when it is coming from external systems like order management. Fine. Whenever you are having a back-to-back -back buy or a back-to-back -back dropship, the approvals are automatic. That is what uh, uh, Karthik has told. We'll now go on and set up your purchase order approvals. So here, setup and maintenance is not there. So he is not having any setup and maintenance. And so otherwise, Calvin Dot is not having it. So I will not go over here and then do it. I will not go to the Opera account. So in this place, I will not do it. Anymore. So I will not do this. Also, also. Nana, uh, can you once uh, go to the procurement book here? Uh, one second. Let me say complete and then complete, and then complete the automatic approval. Yeah, fine. fine. So click on it. And then I will now make a search. If I click on search, and I will now go to what? Manage procure, manage document approvals. Manage personnel. Doc personnel. Right? APP personnel. So I go to the manage document approvals. Let us now set it to automatic actually. Because this is now manually set. The entry point is automatic, whereas the remaining are not automatic. And I will now enable this one. And normally I use to set up the terms approval three now. I click on edit rules. Let me make an automatic approval. I click on it. So I click on process. So I will now say it's a P01 auto. So I am now making an automatic approval and take off it and put the description. And I will now say rule always applies. I am not going to have any uh, conditions here. I am click on add actions and I will now make it as automatic. So drop it down. I will now make it as automatic. I <clears throat> click on OK. I click on save and then deploy. Save and deploy. So we are not deploying it. It will now deploy. <coughs> and then I will now enable this rule and then disable the other one. So this rule is going to be enabled. And then I will not disable the other one. It will be automatic. I will not I will disable it. I am not disabling it. Actually. It is not disabled. So click on done and then come out of it. And then again come back and then see it. And do it. Sometimes otherwise it doesn't happen properly. And again come back and then check whether your your three, your terms of row three is enabled. Actually. That's all. Now he is asking me to come to what? The procurement area. Traffic. But I will not go there. He wants to say. Yes, ma'am. I will not go there. Go to the procurement. I will not go to the procurement area. Go to the procurement. And I will not go to the purchase orders area. So, what do you want me to do here now? Yeah, I just want to tell uh, the users uh, whenever they are doing for the first time, whenever if they don't get the orders, then we need to schedule this program in the production setup. Uh -huh. What what this generate orders? Generate orders. This needs to be uh, scheduled. If you don't run this, then even oh, if you do multiple times, then and the generate order will it pick up this one now? This Which one? This requisition, whatever I have on this area now. Fine. So I am in the Calvin draw. Fine. Huh. What do I want? called? Uh, I have now gone to the purchase orders. The Calvin draw. Yeah. Gone there. And then here in this process requisition, we are seeing it now. So. Yeah. Then, Position will be picked by the generate orders for automatic conversion to your purchase order. Because uh, sorry, Nana, your, your voice was not clear. Yeah, this is a 204115. If I run uh, the generate orders, will it uh, get in the PO? No, no. This generate orders, it is interfacing from order management to procurement. So if your purchase requisition is not seen anywhere in the request process requisition level, uh, then you need to run the generate orders. Oh, ho, ho. if it is available, then this will that will not work. You're saying. 
uh, if it's available then it's fine if you create a uh, sale order for a drop ship let's mm-hmm. say the pr has been created at the sale order level and it is not visible at the uh, process requisition uh, process yeah then the generic then, order will help you out. Hey, yeah, yeah. It's clear now fine if it is not visible on the process requisition area then you have to run the generic order for converting the pr into a pr so what he's saying is that you normally schedule it i will tell you about when it will not be visible now right? i will not tell you when it will not be visible and right click on the duplicate so when this requisition will not be visible right? there is one thing called what uh, there is a profile here right? that they are not a profile it is a setup option i will not go there click on the over and go to this page so i will not tell you when it will not be visible so click on it i will not go to the setup and maintenance setup and maintenance So that I mean is, I go to actions and then here I will not go to the go to offerings. I go to the offerings. I will not go to the procurement now. I click on the procurement. I am not going to the procurement. So I click on the procurement. I will not go to the opt-in futures now. I click on opt-in futures. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Abhi, yeah. I was not able to do that. So procurement and then I go to the opt-in futures now. So procurement, and then I go to the opt-in features. There is one option for consolidating all the requirements into one purchase order. I go to the procurement. I go to the purchasing. In the purchasing, I go to the features of it, not the procurement. But I go to the purchasing, and then I click on the features. So on the features, on the purchasing, the features. What happens? You have got consolidate online requisition to fee for purchase orders. If this tick mark is enabled. Then it will not be available on the process requisition area. Here, it will not be available in that area. What happens? It will not be available. That is what you are saying. Okay, fine. So now uh, it is available. That means what? This profile has not been properly set. This is not enabled. Actually. If we are enabling it, then we have to run the generate orders. Fine. That has to be scheduled in the program. That will be what happens? That clumping all the incoming requisitions into one PO actually. So that is what is called consolidating all the requisitions into. Minimal purchase orders. Bill. If this is enabled, then you have to run the generate orders. That is what you are saying. I am not doing it. So on this area, you have to enable it. If the company wants so, if they want only one purchase order for multiple requisitions, they are doing. So now what I do is I will not go there. I will not go to the purchase orders. And then I will not query for it. I will not go to the process requisition. I will not manually do it. Go to the process requisition. Yeah. I will not select it. Then I will not add a document. I will go there. And then let me select it, select it, and then click on Add Document. Let's select it. The Add Document is not coming. Come on, yeah. This has to come now. It has to be enabled actually. Two zero four one one five. Two zero four one one five. So let me make a check of the data. Let me search. Let me search. When I'm searching it, it's not coming. But I am unable to add to document data. What is the problem? Or it is already converted into a purchase order or not? It must have. So got there it. is some information to selling. Can you click on that I icon? It I is like. It is against the sales order. The requisition goods are to be shipped to a third party actually, and not for us. That is what it is saying. But whatever is not coming. So let us now go there and then have a look at what in the done. I know that. I will not go on and have a look. At. Somebody might have even run the generate orders or something like that. I will not go to the manage orders and then query for. So let us now query the requisition number. Requisition number is what? Uh, we now see whether anything is created or not. Two zero four one one five. And then I will now say buyer is blank. We will see in it. So click on search and now see whether any purchase order is now created. Two zero four one one five. Nothing is there actually. No order is there. So it must be eligible for a for a purchase order. Let us now otherwise generate orders and we'll see. Click on it. I will not go to generate orders. I will not run it. Generate orders. So click on submit new process. Click on submit new process. Go there. Requisitioning view is also used on business unit. Requisition number is what? Two zero four. Double one five. Double one five. So let me run it. Click on submit. I will not generate the order for this one. Click on it. Just submit. We are not generating it now. Fine. Let's see whether it works or not.
So we can even run for a blank requisition number as a scheduled concurrent actually. So there's no running. running. There's no completed. So there's no succeeded. I have no clip counts, but I've done now. And then come back here under the manage orders and then make a search for any purchase orders created. Oh, God. Supplier is what? Computer. Uh, ABC Consulting, actually. ABC Consulting. ABC Consulting is a supplier. So I will now remove the requisition number and make a search. It is for 16 quantities, actually. So nothing is visible here, actually. Uh, I will now go over here and go to search for Go there. So, it is the Calvin drops logging. Nana, sir, can you check the log of the generate orders? One second. Because the item is having a list price actually. There is a must. And then I will now remove the buyer now. Buyer information will be removed and click on search. It's not coming here now. And let us now go there and then make a check of that. It's called you know, generate orders. You know, the PO has orders. not been created. Yeah, the PO is not created. So this is now succeeded. View the output of it. I think it's a browser issue, Nana, sir. Uh, that is why I tried in different browsers also. No, no, you just go to process requisition and click on blank search. Okay. Process requisition. So go the generate orders job started. Generate orders job successfully submitted. Nana sir, check the log also. Log also you want to check. View log. Go check the log. Log. So do the log. Scroll log. Scroll. Finished closing back No data found. Process completed. Where it is written as no data found? Here in the second last line. No data found in procedure. Mm -hmm. The second last line. The position the position to be right. So that no. means not pick the building for pausing at all. Yes. Uh, he's saying is that whatever it, it may be a browser issue if I go that one. I will not know one thing. I will not um, go to what. I will not again go to the process requisition. It may be a browser issue also. It's not the process requisition. Two zero four one one five. Remove the buyer and make a search. So select it as an actions and then export Excel in there. So we'll now see whether it's a browser issue or not. I will now go to what? Let us now log in as Calvin Drop from here. I'm in Chrome actually. In the Chrome, let me try to log in as Calvin Drop. So log out of it. So let us now sign out. Sign out and then click on confirm. And then sign in as what? Calvin Drop. Calvin Drop. The password is located and click on sign. Go to the procurement. And then I go to the purchase orders. Calvin drop. So here I go there. I will now go to the process. Anna, are there any agreements to that particular item? No, no. It has just been created. And there is no agreement. We don't have any agreement. Is a newly created one. So if you select also here also whatever error is coming. So it is clearly a browser issue. So and then added documents. Is a browser issue. You select it and then click on add document. So it's a browser issue. So add to document that I'm adding it to. So go there. So there is no agreement at all. So I'm not putting any agreement. If you have a CPA, we cannot populate. Remember, only when you have a BPA, we can populate it. CPAs cannot be populated. And then since there is no agreement, I'm not populating anything at all. So I'm on okay. So by which what happens, it becoming the right hand side. So go there. 
So click on it and then I will now create, click on create. Click on. So well, you are creating a P1. So now we are now creating a PO actually. So the PO is now getting created actually. So once when the PO is created, you will now see the approvals is automatic. Fine, we already said it. So let us now ensure that nobody has filled around on the approvals actually. And then you now go ahead on this. <clears throat> so the creation process is now going on. So the PR is now getting converted into PO. Fine. It is a dropship PO. And then in the address, you can now see the customer's address coming up. So build location there. So default ship location is not coming at all here. It is the customer's address. He has to ship it. So he has to ship it there. What I'm the customer's location now. Uh, Karthik, where we can see the customer's address now in this place? I will not go to the. Uh, it's in the delivery location. Where to deliver locations? Is there On the right hand side, just oh, beside yeah, yeah. the order. The locations are computer service address. Yes, yes, yes. So this is the customer. This is the customer's name actually. If you click on the customer's name, you can now see the customer's location also. There is the customer's name. It is not our inventory or anything. So the address is also coming over here. So the supplier has to supply to ship to this customer's address actually. Okay. Also, we, we cannot edit this field. Oh, 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 this field cannot be edited. Huh? Uh, no, no, no. Okay. If it's a dropship, then we cannot edit or we cannot change the location because oh. it's directly shipped to the customer, right? So go to the manage approvals and then have a look at it. 164545, we are going to do it and have a look at it. So whether it is automatic or not, we're going to make a check now. Mm -hmm. So yes, 164544 is now created. <clears throat> Nana, sir, the whole quantity is passed to the customer. Yeah, sir. yeah, yeah. That is what I was unable to understand. Okay. We have a five, but for a on and a five, the buy, make, and transfers are perfectly working. It is only passing on only the balance. Here, there is a setup actually. There is a setup, fine. I will not show you the setup document. Okay? In eBiz, I have a document, fine. I don't know where exactly to see this one. In eBiz, what happens if you go there? In eBiz, uh, I have one document on dropship actually. There is one dropship demystified actually. Fine. There is a similar setup here, but I don't know where exactly it is. Day four, I don't say drop. That explains you everything on this. So click on it. So, one level back. Not a little time. I'm going to go over there. First of all, day three. No, day three. I'm going to go to day two. No, day two. Yeah, there is one dropship. Fine, dropship process is there. Dropship process somewhere else. So document is very clear. So here it will not tell you. Fine. We can even drop ship what happens. Uh, whatever is available, we can even subtract it and do it. Now. And this is a drop ship process actually. Fine. There is a document. I don't know where exactly I took it. It is starting on demystified or something like that. And drop ship demystified. It is not there. Fine. Try to go through the document, but that document will explain a lot now. But in the fusion also there is some setup. But I don't know that setup actually. And I thought that it will not work automatically. No there. So application developer is there. Let us not submit it. Now, you will now go to the supplier portal and then create a AS in actual. So, the supplier will be receiving an order on the, the one. The one. So, it is now submitted for approval actually. So, US 164545 is the one. So, let us now set up the, what happened, the password for the supplier actually. And the document purchase order is submitted. Let us now go there. Click on it. Let us now set up the password for the supplier actually. I will now go to the home icon. I will now go to the tool security console. Let us now set up the password for the supplier actually. I will now go to the tools. We go to the tools <clears throat> and then I go to the security console. Fine. So the supplier's contact is what? Uh, John Abbott. I go to the security. I go to the users. Now. So the character software contact is John Abbott. Jivo Hachan. John Abbott is the supplier contact. Now. And then space Abbott. What is the, about John or what? John about the one. Anyway. So A B O E about A B O E about A B B A B O E T only about J O H L dot A John about 
So now, once when he creates a A S N, the sales order will now progresses to what ship actually from requisition created, it will be going to ship actually. If you click on refresh now, fine. The P O created will now see whether it is getting updated or not. The P O is created, fine with that. So we'll now see whether the P O created is now coming on. On refresh now, Karthik will now show as the P O also here. The P O number also will be showing over here. Uh, everything till the fulfillment, you can see it. Yeah, it's Just clicking. Yeah, it's coming here. The P O number is also coming. Right. If you go to the orchestration plan, you can see it till the fulfillment. Yeah, yeah. So change the name. So now the PO number is also coming, and then now go on to awaiting giving it. So initially it was requisition creation, and then after the PO is created on the fulfillment lines, you can now see the PO also on the sales order. The PO also PO number is also coming, and then it is now awaiting fulfillment actually, awaiting what happens the shipping actually. Now what the supplier is going to do is what uh, we have not done the reset of the password. The so another login with the other one. Now go to the place. You know, log out and log in with the John dot about A B B O T T. Here is the password for that. So he will now create A as an actor. So once when he ships it to the customer, the J O H L dot A W O T T. Oh, that is the password is still there. So once when he ships it, he will now create A as an indicating that he has already shipped to the customer actor. So we are going over there. He is a supplier portal actually. From the supplier portal, he is doing it. So click on it. Go to the supplier portal, and then go to the supplier portal. So here he will now create AAs and actual. And click on create AAs. So he will now be creating AAs and click on create AAs. So he is now creating AAs and actual. So AAs and indicates that he has shipped to the customer directly. So click on purchase order number is what US one six four. What is the number here? Anybody remembering it? One six four. Four five. Four five, am I correct? Okay, one six four four five. No, no, no. Four five. no. Yes, one six four, and then make a search. I'm moving. One six four five four five. Five four. Okay, come on. So we'll now make a search for it. Thank you for search. It is for sixteen quantities. So click on create ASN. Karthik, if I create ASN only for ten quantities, will it get partially done now? You must enter one of the more lines. We'll now say. Yeah, you need to select the line. Uh, Creative. I will now make a A's on only for ten quantities and then see how the sales order progresses. You know, going to get the thing. so the freight terms. He is not putting it up. Right? Shipping method. He gets up. He is not putting up anything. Fine. Number of uh, packing slip units is what four units. Fine. Bill of lading number is this. And then the bill number is this. And the packing slip number is this. And he is not filling up everything. And then here we will now say out of sixteen, he is now only shipping ten. So for the line has to get split into sales order. That is what I feel. And now see what happens. Second one. So ten numbers are now shipped by him to the customer directly. Now click on submit. So we now click on submit. He is now getting AS. Okay. The shipment number. You need to give the shipment number. Now I underscore one zero one of the shipment. So go there. Shipment number is now on. Click on submit. So for ten quantities, we are now creating AS number. So this AS number will now get interface to what happens your sales order directly. So click on it. So the AS number is there. Click on again. Uh, uh, before that, Nana, you need to make the GRN for this. No, GRN is not required. If an ASN is made, GRN is not required at all. No GRN is required. No go there. So we'll now go to this place and then have a look at it. No GRN is required. So the ASN is now made and go to the manage order screen. And then if you refresh it, what happens? The line would has to get split actually. You go to the place and click on that. Refresh it. Orchestration process. Yep. Orchestration plan is there. <clears throat> the line has to get split into two. So awaiting shipping. And what is this? Change pending. So go there. So I will now give it done and then read the sales order. Nine seven four zero nine is the one. Yeah. So click on refresh in this now. Right? Now ten. It has now become sixteen. No, it has to become ten. No, that's right. The line has to become ten. No GRN is required. It comes automatically on this one. So click on refresh. Refresh. They're now refreshing it. So yes, no, it shipped only ten actually. Sales order is doing that. 
uh, if you click on demo, the ASN is there actually. So uh, no, manage ASN is not there at all. Right? Manage shipping is still. Manage shipping is still. So uh, you only see the purchase order number US 164. Uh, actually, you can also do this from uh, receive expected shipments. Mm. So click on search so manage shipments. So this is the one now. Fine. So the way bill number, everything is there actually. And if you click on the date and the manage shipments, it's already gone to the customer actually. The bill is already not showing you here. It's already gone. So this has to update the sales order. Uh, it will take some time now. It's not taking some time. So, now you see line has got split actually. It, it will take some time to interface. So now what happened? The line has got split. So the 10 quantities has now been shipped actually. If you go there, click on it. I will not click on the orchestration number. The orchestration number. If you click on the orchestration number, this would have been shipped actually. If you go there, it will be shipped. Shaped, uh, what's possible, they'll not start and then no good awaiting value. So once when the balance quantities are also shipped, they will also getting shipped back. Good. So that's it. So this completes a drop ship process token. Any doubts on this one? So it is now shipped and then there's no awaiting shipping actually. Now we will now look at okay, again, we have to go there and then ship the balance and then wait. So if you don't have a, a supplier license, fine. Right? I supply portal is not there. Then we can even what happens? Uh, do the result, a logical result of the inventory result for the next six quantities. What happens? I will not do a logical result. No more the case. Right? Let us not perform a logical result for this. So click on it for the next quantity. I'm going to make a logical. And go to that. What's called? I will not click on the home icon, and then I go to the supply chain execution. I will not go to the home icon, and then I go to the supply chain execution. So supplier may give you a ASN or otherwise we have to what happens, take a, a telephonic call that he has shipped and then we will now go to the inventory management and then we will now make a logical result. And when you are making a logical result, it must be an expense of inventory. Come on. Go to the place. I will now go to the results and then make a logical result first. So go to the inventory, go to the results now. I click on the results. And then receive expected shipment is the one. Go to the receive expected shipments. And then the purchase order number is what? US164545, isn't it? Got it. Uh, very rare case scenario that people do it from the supplier portal, uh, but most of the transactions are done from the inventory side only. People okay. usually do it from here. Okay. So the purchase order number is not visible at all. Why? 164545 is the one. It is the organization 001 only. Why it is not visible at all? So click on search now. The purchase order is not visible at all. Can you search with the supplier? I will not search with the supplier actually. Supplier is not ABC consulting. Click on search. No, no. Uh, we need to go to create ASN. Oh, oh. so even uh, the. No, no, sir. Are we in the right organization? Okay. Receive expected shipment is not possible. That's what Karthik is saying. Here also, you have to create an ASN only. Oh, God. No, no. If you go to the task, first we need to create ASN. The whatever transaction you have done in the supplier portal, we need to perform here. No, that is not required. No, fine, it is already coming over. It is already shipped. Actually. No, no, the, for the what second one, it has been done. It is already shipped. For the second the order is already shipped. Actually, the 10 quantity is already shipped. Actually. No need for to the six. I'm, I'm talking about the six six quantities. The six quantities, you are saying that we have to create a ASN now. That is what you're saying. So, I thought that we can even receive it. So, here, what happens is we only have to create a ASN manually. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we have an option here to create so ASN. We need to give the purchase order. It will not work for a drop ship. Am I correct? Sorry? For a receive expected shipments will not work for a drop ship. Am I correct? No, 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 no. What I'm saying is at the inventory level also, we can create ASN, whatever you have done in the supply portal. Here. No, we go on and search for it. The purchase order number, I'm unable to query at all. No, no, you can't do that, but you need to create an ASN here. Only then it works. It won't come in the receive expected shipment. So go there, click on it. US one six four five four five. I can uh, click on search now. And I always demonstrate only with the A's and there now. So click yeah, on. we need to create the same thing what we have done there. We need to give the shipment number and okay. the remaining quantity. And then I will now say it's a nana underscore one zero two. And then I will now remaining I will now leave it blank and then click on submit. One zero two is no submit. Now you will now see without a result whether the sales order is getting updated or not. 
one zero to zero. It is not done. So we created a liaison on the on our transactional system and not on the supplier portal. Will now go there and then how to connect with that? It is now changing it to what ship production. That is going to operating building actually. So if it doesn't go to uh, ship, then uh, as per Karthik, we have to receive all the liaison also. We'll now see whether it goes there. Also. The sixth point has to go to what ship production. So through liaison, we have seen that it is now progressing to ship. Yeah, see here also it is now getting progress to ship production. So no physical receipt is required. So no physical receipt. So upon liaison itself. What happens? The system is sensing that it is shipping, whether it is from supply portal or from our uh, systems. Basically, so this completes the drop ship with the GOP. Now I will now make another sales order for drop ship without GOP. I will now make another sales order for a drop ship without GOP. Take another pressure. So I will now ship, and then it will be going to what awaiting building. So let us now make another drop, another order for a drop ship without a GOP. So click on. So click on create order. <clears throat> we'll now make a drop ship. So go to the space. I'm going to use one of the I'll now put the computer. Computer is already It's coming. And then I will now populate the item. Further. So the T0101. Not this item. I will now put some other item because this is again configured for drop ship actually. So let us now do, take another item. Okay? I'll now say AS65000. So this item is not configured for GOP at all. Not configured GOP. I will not go for the uh, seven quantities. So this is having a selling price actually. Thank you for that. So this item is not configured for GOP. So now we are going to make a drop ship without GOP. So for which what happens? You go to the next place. The next one, what happens? You go to the supply. You go to the supply. And then here I will not put the supplier as what? ABC consulting. Supplier is ABC consulting. And then supply side, I'm going to put it. And ABC is. So that's it. Fine. Go there and then submit the work. So this will now trigger go to the purchasing directly. So click on submit. So go to the submit. So once you submit for it, so this is basically a drop ship without a GOP. This item is not having any. No, so no, no setup would be needed here. Nothing is required. Nothing is required. No setups are required because it is not. No it's assignment set. Nothing. No, no assignment set. No assignment set. Nothing. It will not be having any, anything. Done. No assignments are nothing is required. So go there. So I will now go to the orchestration plan profession. And now we can see the requisition appearing on the process requisition area. The rest of the process are same. Uh, but uh, this works only if uh, both procurement and inventory is being handled by a single person. Is it better? So? But it won't happen in real time. Huh? Inventory it is won't happen. But... Department. Procurement is a purchase of the department. How it can be a same person? Yeah, yeah. But uh, there are a few uh, organizations where um, maybe because of lack of uh, resource and everything, uh, okay. both the procurement and inventory That's... being handled by a single person. No, that is an exceptional case. But... Yeah, yeah. But uh, just telling this because uh, unless and until the inventory quantity is updated, only then he can create, like he can give the supplier. Oh, God. Okay, you see the practicalities as far as the implementation is concerned now. Without a job ship, it will definitely work. It will be going to what? Requisition created will be coming. And then let us now log in in this place now. I will now log in as Calvin Proth. So it is a basically a supplier's login. I will now log in as a Calvin Proth. And then go to the process requisition area, he must be able to sign. So go to the sign out. So Calvin Proth is a purchase officer. You can sign out. So I will now go to Calvin Proth's login now. Calvin dropped the login. He is the purchase officer. He is the preparer, which is set up an order management parameters actually. He is the preparer and order management parameters. And then here I go to the procurement, I go to the purchase orders now. I go to the process requisition area and then look at this requisition which has come for it. I given for seven quantities of what? A65000 is the one. So it will go there. Click on it. Go to the process requisition area. And then see this space. So the standard engine printer for seven quantities has come over. This is six by triple zero. That is the item. So this is for what drop ship without GOP actually. The rest of the process is same. 
the rest of the process you know, is again saying that preposition should be dropped. Then again, what happens if you have to add to the document builder and then convert into a PO, and then we can either create an ASN either from the suppliers portal or from our own system, we can create an ASN, and then ASN is sufficient for progressing the sales order to ship directly. Any doubts on this now? So thanks, Karthik, for a lot of inputs. Now, fine. So now, and now, and now and again, fine. If you have any questions, you can ask me. Otherwise, we will not call the day. Right? Just one question. In EBS, you put the uh, line type as external. Ah, yeah. Like yeah. The right? GOP is now yeah. superseding. Sir. Whether you put the line type as internal or external, GOP is the ruler, ruling factor. No, no. In second case, without yes. GOP. Also, what I mean, the supplier is the ruling factor. It doesn't even look. Oh, OK. Okay, so just because you put just because you put supplier, that's why it understands yeah, yeah. that it is it got automatically interface to purchase. Oh, okay, got it. Since I put the supplier, it doesn't look only for this one. The item attribute is ignored. Actually. Okay, got it. Just question on us. Yeah, tell me. Nana, this GOP stand for? Sorry, I joined late. Global, global oh. order promising. GOP stands for oh. global. Nana sir, at the time of doing ASN from the receiving, uh, it was showing 16 quantity. No, no, so, 10 quantities. It was only showing 6 quantities, not 16. Because 10 is already supplied. Na? So it was showing only 6. It came down. Only, only the balance one can be... No, balance only came down. Or other, no. it was not showing anything, I would have put 6. So nothing was shown there. So nothing has defaulted actually. Fine, I, I put 6. You just watch the video again. Right. Thank you. Nana, we can come back to you regarding this, right? I joined it late. Nana. Okay, this video will be uploaded into YouTube. Right? This video will be uploaded into YouTube. So watch it in YouTube. Actually. Sure. So if you right. want something, we can come back to you, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can always come back to me. No, no, no. But you have to give me a cup of coffee for that. <laughs> definitely, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> no questions asked on that. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you, Nana, after a long time. Any other questions from anybody else now? So watch this video. Uh, yeah. Contacts, inputs are there. So you can even contact him on our Telegram groups actually right? for any further clarification. He has already done these things now. So he will have your fine tuning of uh, your activity on the field. He will be able to help you. Nana sir, just a question. You are you are organizing these sessions for as part of any of the OM training or? No, 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 no. Actually, what happens? I am now conducting a corporate training. You know, and that is in the back end of it. So the. Oh, okay. To what happens uh, record this and then uh, give it to them because they don't have time to what happens uh, come and then sit in the class actually. So for okay. Okay. only for them actually. Great. Corporate, uh, training actually. It's a part of a corporate training. Thanks to them. Thanks to you, Nana sir. <laughs> because they don't have time and then they are busy with so many other works and then uh, they were unable to come and then sit in a classroom maybe. So I am now recording all this thing to give it to them. No, no, it will be helpful for us yeah. also. <laughs> yeah. Nana, good to see you after a long time. Hey, Lokesh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Uh, in a way, it's giving us good exposure uh, with this uh, training. Uh, one more thing. Like, uh, suppose if we receive and then uh, see, it will be. Was uh, not acquired at all. A is in itself is sufficient for us. Now. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I mean to say. If we receive, if we're able to receive, then it will become a back to back order, right? And deliver to location will be. Uh, internal so try the receiving. Uh, uh, receiving is not required, but okay. maybe it may not even allow you to receive also. Uh, uh -huh. We are doing ASN just for a logical interface saying uh -huh. that it has been shipped. Exactly, exactly. It is, a okay. it is just a logical thing. We are trying to query on the PO for receiving, it is not coming at all there. So we are seeing okay. it. Fine, fine. Yeah, thanks. Maybe only the ASN is the only route for whatever the fulfillment of this drop shipment. Okay, thanks. Okay, then, yeah, fine. So, if there is no other questions, we will not call it a day. No, okay, Nana. Good to see you. Thank you, Nana. Thank you, Nana. Bye. Bye. Yeah, you. See you soon. Bye. Thank you, Nana. Kavita from US. I think many guys are from US also. <laughs> okay, bye, all of you. Thank you, Nana, sir. Have bye. a good night, Nana. Sir. Good night, good night. It will be uploaded to YouTube. Good night.